Welcome to the Presto Server installation lesson. In this lesson, you will learn how to download and install the Presto Server, set up the different configuration files, and also set up the catalog files. In this course, we're going to install the Presto Server version 331. I've tested it with the different open source software we plan to install in this course, and it works well. It also works well with the Java 8 JDK we installed earlier. If you decide to install a later version of the Presto server, just make sure you have the right Java JDK, maybe 8, maybe 11. I'm sure you can look at the release notes to figure out the right JDK version, but make sure you have the right one. And also make sure it works well with all the other software you plan to install. And with that, let's get started. First things first, pull up a web browser and enter in prestosql.io slash docs slash 331. This should take you to the documentation for Presto Server version 331. Under the Installation section, click on Deploying Presto. Under the Installing Presto section, right-click on presto-server-331.tar.gz. A pop-up menu should appear once you right-click on this link. Within that pop-up menu, scroll down and look for the Copy Link option. Select this option. We're going to use this link shortly to download the Presto server file. Next, minimize the web browser and open up a terminal. Within the terminal, you want to check for a few things. I typically just do this most times. I check that I have the right version of Java, in this case, Java 8. I also check the Python version, because as I'm going to show you later on, you definitely need Python installed on your computer in order to run the Presto server. And this is because the script used to run the Presto server is written in Python. Now, before we install the Presto server, let's go ahead and create a folder for that installation. I prefer to put the folder on my desktop. So I'm gonna create a folder called Presto-Installation. Let's navigate into the newly created folder and install the Presto server using the curl command. Remember the link to the Presto server we copied earlier? This is where we use it. Once the download process completes, let's inspect the folder to see what we now have. We can see that we now have a .gz file. Let's go ahead and unpack that file. And we can unpack it using the tar command. Let's inspect the presto-installation folder. We can now see that we have a new folder there called presto-server-331. Let's navigate into that folder. We can see several files and folders that came with the installation. Let's inspect the plugin folder. Pay attention to the hype-hadoop2, MySQL, and Kafka plugins. I will highlight them again later on when we have to use them. Next. Let's inspect the bin folder. You can see the launcher.py file I mentioned earlier, and this is one of the reasons why you need Python. Finally, let's take a look at the lib folder. Now this contains a bunch of useful libraries. At this point, we're ready to start configuring the Presto server. Create an etc folder. Let's navigate into the etc folder. I'll go through the rest of this video quite quickly because the next video has a detailed explanation of everything we do within the etc folder. Next, let's create the node.properties file. This file is used to configure each Presto node, including the workers and coordinator. Next, let's create the jvm.config file. Now this file is used to configure the Java virtual machine. Next, let's create the config.properties file. And this file is used to configure the Presto server. Next, create the log.properties file. And this file is used to set the login level.
Now that we're done with these configuration files, let's go ahead and set up the catalog folder. Navigate into this catalog folder. Let's create and set up the hive.properties file. By setting up this file, we're going to be able to query and access data from the Hive data warehouse. Remember when we inspected the plugin folder earlier? We saw a Hive Hadoop 2 plugin. This is where we use it. Next, let's set up and create the MySQL.properties file. By setting up this file, we will be able to query and create tables in an external MySQL database. Remember when we inspected the plugin folder? We also saw a MySQL plugin. This is where we use it. Finally, let's create and set up the Kafka.properties file. By setting up this file, We'll be able to access data from Apache Kafka topics. Presto treats each Kafka topic as a table and each message within that topic as a row in that table. One more time, I promise. Again, remember when we inspected the plugin folder? We saw a Kafka plugin. This is where we use it. Navigate back to the presto-server-331 folder. At this point, we're done with installing the Presto server, and we're ready to take it for a spin to see if it works. To do this, we're going to use the launcher.py file we've mentioned several times in the past. We're going to use the start option to kick off the run, the status option to see if it's still running, and the stop option to stop it. In conclusion, in this lesson, you've learned how to download and install the Presto server. You've also learned how to set up the configuration files and also how to set up the catalog files.